Episode of Binary Jazz, or what we like to call Binary Jazz Coin, where we talk about all the stocks that we're gonna uh, just invest in, that all the crappy stocks we're gonna invest in, and stick it to the uh, uh, hedge fund investors and uh, uh, Wall Street Bros. Did uh did you all get in on any of that action this week? No. Okay. I thought about it for half a second, but I'm. Oh, I did. I absolutely did. I was too busy doing my job, Gary. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I definitely did some of that this week too. But um, I don't know, like Tuesday night, it was pretty clear. Like, well, this seems like a, was it Tuesday night? I think. Time is an illusion. Mm. Uh, Yeah, God, that's the truth. Whatever night it was, it was pretty clear. Like, oh, this is, this will be fun. I'll, I'll, I'll buy some GME tomorrow. And in addition, uh, there are some other stocks that were being shorted that were in the conversations, like Nokia and mm-hmm. AMC. Uh, some. No, I didn't. I didn't dabble with AMC at all, actually. So, did a little bit of GME, Nokia. Uh, but did Nokia, you put all of your money in Dogecoin? I put a uh, hundred dollars in Dogecoin, and I. I mean, like I. I walked away. I like I. I. I absolutely day traded. I went in the morning and by afternoon. I'm like, nah, I'm not part of the revolution. I'm gonna take this cash and walk away. So, <laughs> part of the revolution. A couple hundred bucks, not a bad day's work for not having a damn clue. But like, well, this trend seems fine. I'm willing to lose this much money. I'll put this much in. Fine. It was, it was all right. I mean, it was fun, silly. I don't day trade, so I just put that money back into an index fund <laughs> where it came from. <laughs> we. And now I have an opinion on short-term capital gains. You do? No, I, not really. I, I don't think no, I don't. I don't. I think they should be higher. That's my opinion. Hot, hot rich. take. Hot take. <laughs> yeah. yeah, ether rich. Well, uh, I'm that's... having difficulty telling one day from the next. So much so that earlier this week, I was like, maybe I'll shave the side of my head. And then I was just like, do I actually want to do that? Or am I just trying to break up time? Because then it'll be like, oh yeah, I, I shaved my head in January. Like it'll be like a way of figuring out <laughs> what day it is. I don't know. As you can see, my head is not shaved. So I got through it <laughs> for now. Wait, you're going to shave your whole head or just, ha- I'm no, confused. No, part of it, side. like kind of like a side cut. Underneath, or, okay, or yeah, okay. I, uh, my hair is getting really long and I don't know what to do about it. That's, that's the conundrum. Cause I'm just like, why, if not now, then <laughs> when my hairdresser can't yell at me, I'm bored. <laughs> I might, I might go ahead and just let it go. You know, cause every time, every time my hair gets long enough, that uh, every time my hair gets long enough to, to, that I feel like I need to shave it. Uh, and I let it get longer uh, this last time than I have in a while because it's winter and I'm less motivated. And also in the winter, I kind of like, oh, like having fur on my head might be nice, you know, because it's cold. It's smart, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't help at all because it's not <laughs> enough. Um, but every time I'm shaving my head, I always do this thing where like I shave it and I leave the middle just to see, just to see if this time maybe the mohawk would look okay. Yeah. The answer is never yes, oh, because the mohawk really? doesn't start until like the middle of my head, like the top oh. of my head is where the mohawk would start. So it it, it it's gotcha. never it's never yes. I mean, it's a choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe I maybe that's what I should do. I should go for the mohawk with like a slat right in the middle where my headphones go. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. I'm just I'm just gonna keep it growing long and see what happens. Just go full hippie. 
when uh i mean i did have i had a mohawk once upon a time i had long hair and then when i graduated um college i shaved everything except the mohawk i didn't spike it or anything but i just had like a strip mm -hmm. down the middle yeah uh, it was really long and I, I liked it a lot and then i decided that i needed to cut it because i needed to get a job and then when, once I cut it, I realized that like my hairline's like way back to here and, and I should never have hair again. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to go blue, like this color blue in my shirt on my hair. I think that would be nice. It. It. Yeah, I need to bleach it. You have a job, what are you, what are you yeah. worried about? <laughs> I, and I don't talk to people. I mean, oh. I talk to people. I don't wait, talk to wait customers. For Ron, wait for I Rhonda will. to be mad at me. <laughs> I, I think she'd be okay with it. I'm Who told you to that this was okay? I would, <laughs> yeah, she, I she would dye my hair blue if I could. This, I, I shaved on, uh, I don't know, one day this week, maybe Tuesday when I was pondering whether I should purchase stocks or whatever, stonks. And uh, it was it was really like, it's, it's really getting gray in here when mm -hmm. it's grown out. So I'm like, I'm gonna grow a beard and then I'm like, oh, I'm gonna look like hermit. I grow a beard. <laughs> you, might, you might look older. <laughs> I don't know that I want that. <laughs> I want to slow down time. My dad <laughs> sent a video. Uh, so my son got his um, his wisdom tooth removed yesterday. One of oh. them. One of them. Uh, and my dad sent a video uh, that was like about him getting his wisdom tooth removed, and it was the first time that I have seen, I think, my dad's face close up. I mean, it's been, you know, a year since we've seen them in person um, and, and outside of like a Zoom window. Um, so it was the first time that I saw his, his face and like, man, he looks older than I remember. And that was really weird. That was really, really weird. And then I wonder how I look. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute, time is moving. I, I haven't, I, well, I mean, I haven't aged since I was like 30, so. Except, except um, the hair, except the hair just keeps going away. I feel like I look, have, I looked older to begin with. And so now I'm finally like You're easing in up. to yeah. that. <laughs> Some might say it's because I'm a Capricorn. Some might, some, some people call me Maurice. Yeah, some people. Woohoo! <laughs> I almost got Chris to squirt water out his nose. <laughs> and it would have been cartoonish, like it would have been like, like er erupting. Yeah, like way more water than he took in would be squirting out his nose, like a, like two garden hoses. That's exactly, that's exactly what it would be. Mm -hmm. Allison, you made it, you made it. Uh, we still have stockings up in my background. I like it. Nice. Very the nice. funny part is we put all our Christmas decorations away. We forgot the stockings. Well, uh, not to make you feel, not to make you feel too bad, uh, or you shouldn't feel too bad because I uh, put all the Christmas, the solstice stuff away, but left the jingly bells that we had hanging from the front door. So, I mean, it just became a part of the, of the scenery, like in the door jingles when we open it. Like, I don't, we rarely we, open that door. And then I found have, um, a single, a single uh, ornament wire hanger thing. Just one. We have a two foot Christmas tree we leave up year round with ornaments on. Is that just because you did it one year and, and then you're like, yeah, we're not gonna put this away. Or it's is that, because uh, because you're actually so, celebrating year round. No, it's intentional. So several years ago, on December 23rd, my grandma died real suddenly, um, and so that really obviously was like the theme of the season. Like, I think like she died on the 23rd, and I think by the 28th we had the funeral. I mean, it was and it was like the end of just a crappy year, and just like we had to have the funeral before the end of the year. Like we just, there was no other option. Like the family was just like, you know, and so. When we cleaned up after Christmas that, well, two things. One, uh, she had already made Christmas cookies. And so like I metered out Christmas cookies to myself from 
Christmas oh. until like it was well into January. And Rhonda's like, these are stale. Do you still want that? I'm like, I want to eat every single one of these. Yes. I will be sick and, on and Christmas. And I would eat one a day and cry and eat a Christmas cookie every day. Uh, and then um, we started cleaning up. We started cleaning up before I finished Christmas cookies, but we started cleaning up and uh, we were like, let's leave this tree up. Um, you know, because Tyler was really young at the time. And so we left it up that year. Uh, and at some point we had a conversation, like, when do we want to put it away? And we're like, like, we don't especially. Like, it's, so now it stays up. Now it's just the tree that we leave up all year. I mean, it's not huge. It's just on a, on the top of a bookshelf, not like a prominent place. But I guess if you were to come in the house, you'd think like, oh, they missed a Christmas decoration. But no, it's, it's permanently there. It has to be dusted. Yep. Remember when people would come to your house? No, not really. Actually, we didn't do that. <laughs> I'm just saying, that. like, hypothetically, if it happened. We do that. What are you talking about? Um, yeah. yeah. This year, the Christmas cookies at, like, you know, about January 3rd, I'm like, ah, they're, they're good. I've had my fill. Wait, let me get one more. Okay, now I've had my fill. All right, <laughs> dump them. <laughs> um, cookies don't love. Which is also good in this house we yeah there's i don't remember how many my my mom made this year a lot we had a lot and the kids like you know lose interest after like a week you know which is they're just like yeah i don't i've tried like two or three of each and i'm good now the sugar cookies that Charlotte, is such a healthy cake. reaction to a cookie one that i do not have <laughs> yeah exactly. me neither that, that i'm like I'm like walking to the kitchen i'm like oh christmas cookies don't mind if i do like you know for a week and a half. As you said and it, I was like, lose interest in a cookie? <laughs> I know, I know. I cannot, I don't understand. It's, all right, more for me. Like, that's my reaction. Like, that's fine. Whatever. I'm going to eat them. And then there was a point where, like, every cookie has that, like, point where it, it gets too dry to be, you can, you can give cookies, like, a lot of latitude. There's a point where it's like, mm, this is more crumb than cookie at this point. And when you pass that threshold, it's time. But I really go far down that threshold. I definitely. I, I don't think the cookies last long enough to get to this threshold that you speak of in my house. I mean, that's fair as well. That's fair as well. Um, but also, like, you have to understand. It's a lot to get there. I'm in a one-bedroom apartment, so right now I'm approximately like five feet away from the kitchen. Um, <laughs> the nearest cookie and that is, is like seven very and a half close. feet from me. Yeah, if there are cookies there, that's like three paces. <laughs> yeah. That is one of the nice things about having this office upstairs and separate from the kitchen. When I was in Florida, like every like the living room was right, you know, it was open floor plan. So I could walk over and reach over the counter and pluck one. And I ate a lot more cookies on a daily basis in Florida. No, if we have cookies in the house, every time I leave the office, which is probably multiple times per day, I will have a cookie. Yeah. yeah. Or two, you're like, I'm or out three. here. Like, yeah, exactly. What am I working for if not for a cookie? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, the, the transition for me is coffee two or three times, cookies several times, lunch, cookies, and then water in the afternoon. All this conversation, so, we do not have cookies, so I'm very... We do. I'm going to have one after this call. <laughs> I'm fasting um, until 10.45 at least, I think. Oh, oh what? Like, is that is that part of like, a, like an doing, IF thing? Yeah, we're, yeah. Yeah. Have you just started that? We started it a couple weeks ago. How are you finding it? Yeah. I, I don't eat yeah. breakfast anyway. And I often okay. don't eat lunch until like noon or later anyway. So like, it's not that much different for me. It's a lot more different for for Aaron, but she wanted to, we wanted to do it together. Um, so I don't, I, I, I don't know that it's doing anything for me, but she, I, I might've lost like point two pounds so far um maybe i don't know i'll have to weigh myself again and see if that actually sticks um but she's found it that she doesn't like crave food earlier in the day and and uh doesn't snack as much and is okay with smaller portions and so i need the ritual of eating something in the morning even if it's like a single piece of toast with butter like i need that you know thing i in, in high school, like I would have like, you know, something, something 
quick and like grab and go. That was my that was like my breakfast. I didn't spend time on breakfast. So sometimes it was like a breakfast bar, or sometimes it was like um, like one of those little like stupid uh pie things that you get from 7-eleven or sometimes it was like yes uh sometimes it was like pop tarts heart. yeah yes cool. but I, like like i would be like i'm just like grabbing this on my way out so i'm not even bothered to put it in the toaster i'm just i mean yeah. like, toasted pop tarts oh, by yeah. the way is the correct way to eat pop tarts but i was fine oh, yeah. with eating them not and just like so like and so then and then sometimes it was just like a like one of those stupid like breakfast shakes things um so like i was used to not eating things for breakfast for a really long time are, are your kids big breakfast eaters they eat breakfast they don't necessarily i mean tyler breakfast tyler eats i mean it, it's crazy breakfast time he's like well i'm gonna have a bowl of cereal i'm gonna have a banana i'm gonna have a piece of toast with peanut butter uh, i'm gonna have another bowl of cereal i'm gonna have uh whatever other fruit is in for like i mean he can just i i watch i'm like my stomach hurts from all the food you've eaten i don't i don't understand but you know, that's just when he's when he's hungry, and then yeah, I mean, he's fine at other meals, and they're not picky either eaters, so like, whatever. But it's just amazing how much he eats. Yeah, in the no, and it's not like he's like ravished. He's just like, oh, I'm a little hungry. It goes a long way. I'm not a breakfast eater, but my brain needs it. But I don't want to do it. Oh, <laughs> I think there's something to that, right? Like, I think that's part of why the ritual for me works is that like, I don't like, I don't know that I recall like waking up being like, oh, I'm hungry, but more like I need to go through the process of like banging plates and like <laughs> opening the fridge and like groggily staring in there, hoping something will speak to me, you know? And then like, by the time I'm sitting down, like, you know, getting some nutrition in me, I'm, like it's, I start to engage. Oh God, why did I schedule events before breakfast next week? <laughs> Well, we have a topic. We do have a topic. The topic is torpor. Torpor. Torpor? Yeah. T-O-R-P-O-R? I actually... Oh, no. I you know what this is? Think I, 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 I was like, this is the day. I felt like this was the day. I actually think I do know what torpor is. Okay. I'll let, I'll let Gary go first. Uh, it's a kind of switch for a keyboard. Like the... For, for torpor switches. Oh, I was. I'm I was kidding. Thinking, it's not. It's. I was thinking no, like a keyboard layout, like. Um... No, it's like the, like below the key, the switch that you know. If you buy like a mechanical keyboard, you can buy like a. a little torpor switch. Tor torpor torpor switch instead of a Cherry MX switch. Yeah. Yeah. Quieter. So. Is torpor um, a measurement of? Um... No. <laughs> hydration. I think it's a measurement of hydration. How hydrated you are. Sure. Three torpors. Huh? Three torpors. I don't think it's units. I think it's just like a. <laughs> well, then how can it be a measurement if it's not a unit? Well, take his torpor. Will you check his torpor? Torpor? <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see. Yeah, it's sufficient. It's a binary. It's a it's a pass or fail test. Pass or fail. Yeah. Well, so that 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 uh, that I think is accurate. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the context Which part that that is that it's a binary that it's you're, it's either this okay. or that. Um, the context. Wait, it's time to talk about bots on Twitter. <laughs> the, the context that I know what torpor is is from uh, Vampire the Masquerade. Okay. Because if a vampire uh, does not feed for a long enough period of time or yes. loses all of their vitality, they go into torpor, which is sort of like a vampire oh. coma. It's sort of like a vampire Actually, coma where they are just, yeah, they're, they're non-responsive. And they can come back out of torpor if you feed them, but otherwise they're in torpor. So that is my understanding mostly before and i know that the word exists outside of that context obviously <laughs> before you chime in allison and, and, and fix anything chris said this is the first time you've responded to something where i've been like oh obviously he 100 percent knows what it is <laughs> like i that is now my internalized definition of torpor 
So my my understanding of torpor is like a really deep sleep or possibly like quasi comatose, but I don't know how accurate that is. But that is my understanding based on where I where I came into the word. Yes, based on vampires and the other based, world. based on vampire the masquerade and white wolf. Yes, <laughs> world of darkness. You say understanding, and I heard factually this is what it is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, well, I think Chris wins this one. I'm going to give it <laughs> for Chris. Um, although no, not... Winners. Yeah. I know, that's a new <laughs> twist. <laughs> Plot twist. Um, it's similar to hibernation, but it's basically a survival tactic used by animals to survive the winter months, but it's not full on hibernation. Um, so... Yeah, right. Yeah, no, I actually, now that, now that you say that, I know that I've heard it in that context as well. But the first thing that I think of is obviously role playing. Obviously, yeah, obviously, obviously vampires. <laughs> um, but basically, like lower heart rate, um, lower body temperature, um, just everything. Which everything. you know, obviously, for vampires, their body temperature is already room temperature. Yeah. So. <laughs> so it'd be like lower is is relative. It just depends on lower the, would actually require like expending energy. So. In that case, it probably wouldn't. I'm talking about the physics of vampires. I never mind. And you get out of torpor by like violent shaking and muscle contractions, which expends energy, but apparently it's not as much like it's offset by how much energy is actually saved during torpor. That is a fascinating detail that I didn't know. So like That's... raccoons and skunks are also like they also use it to get through the winter. Oh, I wonder if that's where those raccoons As well as vampires. <laughs> vampires so now I'm wondering, like, if in addition to the squirrel, squirrels and raccoons and cats down the hill, if there's, like, a vampire back there. Yeah, probably. Almost hibernating. <laughs> probably. No, vampires Vampires don't hibernate for the winter. In fact, the winter's probably better. No, they wouldn't need to. I think we should yeah, start obviously. that as the new, the new myth. <laughs> I've heard vampires that vampires hibernate. hibernate. If they hibernate, if they hibernate at all, I am totally going to drop that just as a fact in a call and like like play it off like everybody knows vampires are are creatures that hibernate. If, if vampires hibernated, it would totally be in the summer because yeah. because the but long, longer not nights play it. longer nights in the winter. Mm -hmm. So obviously that in and and less sunlight. So obviously that is the time when they would be out. And in the summer, it's it's more sun, so they'd want to like go into hibernation, and then they wouldn't need to about to worry about their body temperature because the ambient temperature is going to be much high, higher than than in the winter. So, so it, <laughs> part amphibian. Yeah, yeah. They're cold. They're cold-blooded creatures. They don't. That's why you see vampires sunning themselves on rocks. <laughs> vampires don't sun themselves on rocks. They drink blood. Allison, that's how they warm <laughs> themselves. Really, it's how they warm themselves. It doesn't last very long. Yes. Anyway, so, so if you're feeling lethargic, maybe you just need to. Maybe you just need to go into torpor, or maybe we already are. Just become a vampire. Up. Just become a vampire, and and. Uh, how do you sign up for that? Become a vampire. Yeah. Uh, well, What's first, the canonical way to become a vampire? I've, first, you I've... need to find a vampire, uh, and then you get. Well, there's one hibernating down the hill. And then you get bitten by said vampire. That's it. So the bite the is sufficient. Well, Metal. there's Metal there's 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 some. I, I suppose I suppose there's there's an exchange of fluids, like you get you bite and then you drink some of their blood because you need to also have you need to be drained and then you need to have uh some of the vampire blood sort of replenish the blood that you've lost because obviously your digestive system is the proper way of of getting uh vampire blood into your system that is the correct way how else you do that. it I mean, duh I guess I guess it would work out eventually, right? Like it'll go down to your kidneys and then go into Me the walking down the hill in the backyard carrying an IV pole. <laughs> like, hey, buddy, <laughs> think... shaking a vampire. <laughs> the only alternative that I know from the movies is you have to go to some sort of vampire rave <laughs> in the club scene. <laughs> See, I feel like that's like a re like that's like a I don't buy that. 
a vampire ring. I don't buy the. You yeah. just don't want to dress up in club garb. To... Yeah. That's, oh, God, that's, you're that's so right. Fair. You're absolutely that's right. Fair. That's. Your, your, your black. Maybe with the blue hair, I'll feel more comfortable. probably limited. <laughs> I, I, I think all I wear is like. I mean, it. well, this is blue, but my shirts are all pretty dark t shirts. You can't wear branding to a, to a vampire club. <laughs> yeah. And, and it needs to be like I bought, fishnets involved uh, and like leather and spikes. Yeah, there's no new okay. balance at the, at the vampire club. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I just got slayed, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Where my dad shoes. Um, <laughs> damn, that hurts a little. <laughs> I um, When I started my most recent job, I'm like, dang, I have a lot of t-shirts from from modern tribe and i don't yeah, it'd be kind of weird to show up like hey rocking my modern tribe t-shirts you know so i hopped on amazon and bought a uh a bunch of um like baseball shirts like with the three-quarter sleeves mm-hmm. um just i mean like basically like this shirt like you know but different colors really loving they're called, that three-quarter they're sleeve raglan i don't know man I'm, I just looked for like, I'm not even sure how I searched for them, honestly. Pretty happy with the purchase overall. I really like, I really like- Four out of five uh, stars. I really like Raglan shirts, but I don't Google get that. plain <clears throat> shirts generally. Like I don't just get boring, like my shirts have things on them and there are- Oh no, things these are not boring. How dare you? There, there are fewer things. I used to have a couple that I got from the Gap, but they're like ancient and I got rid of them. Um, but there aren't, there aren't generally, uh, uh, raglan shirts of other varieties often frequent. Sometimes there are and those times. I If you join more teams, maybe I'll get some. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to buy more shirts today, aren't I? Damn it. There's only seven days a week. Yeah. But you need to have like 31 shirts at least so you can get yourself through the month. <laughs> How do your laundry cycles work? Well, see, there's a rotation system, right? Right. So, like, you know, like we, you wear the shirts and like you put them in, you put them in the drawer, and then you just do the thing that's in front, and then like it, it'll just cycle through. And then when you get the, when I'm you do the laundry you do it manually, and there's not some sort of like machine that's oh man, if I if I if I if there was a machine, I would use the machine. And it would just like, I'd open the door and it'd pop up. This is your shirt for the day. I, um, in college, I was doing laundry and Rhonda, I don't know, called me or something. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll come over after I finish filing my laundry. I said filing my laundry because that was, you know, logically what I was doing. And, uh, and that's still referred to, to this day. Oh, like you have some laundry that needs filing. And now that you've told us, <laughs> doubly so. Yes, I mean, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, um, I do put my shirts I, in the drawer as if they were files because I put them in vertically. I, I learned some like life. Hack, yes. Yeah. From probably actually life hacker or something where like if you put your shirts well, in the, vertically, then you can fit more. And well, and, and the other part of that is then like you're not wearing the same like five shirts on the top of the pile. You'd be like, I haven't worn that one in a while. Or right. that and, is the color I need for this occasion. Right. And, I, and the alternative my new balance that, shoes and go. The alternative Raven. to doing that is pulling everything out and putting the other new ones on, on the bottom, and that's too much work. Yes, I I totally agree. Having said that, I just have mine stacked on a shelf in the closet right now. <laughs> I got rid of a lot of shirts before we moved, and uh, it wasn't enough. I need to get rid of a lot more t-shirts. I have I have too many t-shirts. I should get down to like seven, Allison. You're right. I would say I would say ten. Ten is fine. I have more no, than 10 right my, now. My issue is that all my clothing is black. And That's a problem? Even, well, no, because even the vertical way of stacking, I still can't tell what's what because it's all, it's just ah, That's all a good black. point. So I'll, I'll grab something thinking it's one thing and then be like, oh no, this isn't the t-shirt. This isn't the long sleeve shirt I wanted. And like, then I'm I went to, like, and all of a sudden it becomes a pile of black clothing on the bed. <laughs> I went to go buy some jeans not too long ago. And, you know, I went to Target because... I don't know. That's what's close by. And uh, thinking like, oh, I don't know what size I wear anymore. I'm going to try them on. So I grabbed these jeans and marched over to the dressing room. So the big sign that said, sorry, 
due to COVID. And I'm like, oh, what an idiot. Like, how did I not realize that would be the case? So I just brought him home. And, and that's how you got kicked out of Target for trying stuff on in public. <laughs> it was early in the morning. There was no one there. <laughs> I mean, there was a, right. a guy from Amazon there. Oh. Well, we've got, we've got our, we had our, we did our topic reveal already. So, uh, that's torpor. You don't need to do that torpor. Yeah. So I do have torpor. a, I do yeah, have, I have my, trouble saying that word. It is. It's a really weird word. The two R's torpor. at the end torpor. Yeah. Yeah. Torpor. Um, but I do have, I do have the final game stolen from uh, critical role. Ooh. Uh, this is a uh, Marvel character or yoga position. Okay. Marvel character or yoga. So we've position. done we've done a uh, Magic the Gathering character or Kama Sutra position. We've done Marvel character or Jean Claude Van Damme. Uh, this is a Marvel character or yoga position. Okay. Uh, and some of these are are well. <laughs> it, it's it starts off it starts off pretty pretty light. I would say. Don't give uh, us too okay. much credit here. <laughs> um, Spider Man. Go Marvel. Character. Marvel. <laughs> See, I told you. I told you, sort of. Okay, Flying Man. I'm gonna go yoga. yoga. Pose. It is yoga. Firefly. Yoga first. Yoga. Did you see Allison? Marvel. Marvel. Uh, Gary is correct. It is yoga. Uh, devil dinosaur. <laughs> I want it to be yoga. <laughs> uh, yoga. You are both incorrect. It is <laughs> a Marvel character. Your dream world. That's the yoga class I want to go to. Invisible woman. Um, uh, Marvel. <laughs> Marvel. Yeah. I mean, well, the, see, Invisible Man's. That's when Allison leaves the yoga class. She's doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty hard to imagine what that position would be other than just walking out of the studio walking out uh wild holding thing. up your yoga mat in front of you <laughs> sorry what was the next one wild thing oh i hope it's yoga uh marvel it is yoga i've done wild thing or at least i've attempted i'm googling that right now uh medusa uh oh <sighs> Yeah, Marvel. It is a Marvel character. Yeah. Bird of Paradise. Oh. Uh, yoga. Yoga. Bird of Paradise is yoga. Cow face. Yoga. Yoga. <laughs> I was imagining the Marvel character named Cow Face. <laughs> I was like, it's the real bottom of the barrel if that's a Marvel character. <laughs> <laughs> It is a yoga position. Um, <laughs> the hood. Um, Marvel. Mar yeah, Marvel. Yeah, Marvel. Yeah, it's Marvel. <laughs> Again, like trying to imagine what that would look like in yoga. Just me covering myself in a blanket. <laughs> Something. Uh, the warrior. Uh, yoga. Marvel. Uh, Allison is correct. It is a yoga position. <clears throat> Aries. Uh, Marvel. Marvel. Marvel is correct. Uh, last one. Extended puppy. Uh, I want this to be a Marvel. <laughs> a very long dachshund. It's the Fantastic Four's guest. It's or uh, Fantastic Four's pet is extended puppy. It's like a slinky. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> it's, like the, it's like the slinky dog in in a uh, Toy Story. Yeah. Uh, I think it's yoga. You would be correct. Uh, let's see. Just double checking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow. Did we tie? You tied. Yes. Gary and I are equals. <laughs> <laughs>
in battle. <laughs> I think we continue to be, right? Were we not last week as well? Um, yeah. You have tied. Uh, you didn't tie the WWE wrestler D&D Familiar. I think Allison got that. You tied D&D Familiar or some other thing. Uh, you... Is that a tie too? Uh, you tied <laughs> the Marvel character or Jean Claude Van Damme movie. And, oh, that was a tricky one. And Gary won Magic the Gathering card or Kama Sutra by one. So pretty darn, pretty darn close. Pr pretty near. Pretty near. <clears throat> That's all I got. It was uh, it's very cold here last night. But like cold like, for Gary standards or like in the twenties. That's actually cold. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when I yeah, Fahrenheit twenty I think it was like twenty five when I took the dog out this morning. So I mean this is not a surprise to you. And mm -hmm. I've I've experienced this several times before, but like the the ground being crispy underfoot to me <laughs> is is very um unsettling. <laughs> like I just I don't like walking across the lawn with the dog while the while it's crispy like that. Like it's just it's not how I want to start my day. Even thinking about it makes my feet feel a little weird right now, honestly. Um, and I, it's not like I'm going barefoot or anything because it's way too cold for that. But but still, like I, whew, that's the thing. How do you like being a glasses wearer in the cold? Uh, you know, it actually hasn't bothered me too much. I I feel like. I got used to it in Florida because so often you'd like step outside and the humidity would just like, you know, AC's on in like your automobile or your house. And as soon as you step outside, you can't see anyway. So it works out fine. I actually think I probably have better visibility here than I ever did in Florida in summers. Um, I need to get, I need to go see an eye person. An eye person? It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the person that pokes them and says, oh, you need, I don't know. I don't know who you see. My optometrist does not poke. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know that that anyone. Ever I think generally I just have to like read the letters and then. Um, do you not do the what's the puff of air thing? Glaucoma test. test. Yeah. Is that not a thing you have to do every time? Wow, well, um, I think I've done that before. I do it, but it's not. I mean, I don't consider it a poke. I guess. Oh. Like it's very non-invasive. I feel like between that and dilating pupils, like, mm -hmm. I just like, eh, maybe I'd be better off just being like impaired with my vision for a little while longer. I've talked myself out of setting, making an appointment now. <laughs> no, you should go. You need a baseline of normal. <laughs> well, I think eyes is not the logical spot to start. I think I could probably go a lot deeper than that. <clears throat> vision is definitely. <laughs> baseline of my 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 baseline <laughs> like without without eye surgery or extremely painful contact lenses my baseline is not normal so um that, that was what i discovered the that the the time that i did the last time that i did go to the, the optometrist was that they couldn't get a prescription that would actually function because my eyes are shaped weird um yeah and then it makes me wonder like if i just get like because like if i get if I wear sunglasses or if I wear like just probably plain like clear non no lens glasses it helps because it sort of like creates a like a surface that doesn't have all weird reflections so I, I've been wondering if I get like those um like those computer glasses or something just to have a thing yeah the the yellow tinted stuff that helps filter out blue light <clears throat> is a uh, it's pretty nice I don't know if you've ever tried those or not. I have not. I usually hate yeah. colors like that, but you, I don't think, I mean, I think that you might not know uh, pretty quickly. You get used to it. Yeah. 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 And then when you take it off, you're like, dang, why is everything so crisp? <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, it's been a thing that I've been thinking about. Yeah. I think I just need some like really big nerdy glasses, like a throwback to like the early space program, you know? Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, 
at Binary Jazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Thank you.